Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. This is Jennifer with Nookalickle Creations and today I'm going to show you how to do a storyboard using semi-transparent vinyl. The design is simple, easy, and a lot of fun to make. So let me show you how it works. So full disclosure, I was making two tumblers at the same time using the same method but different designs and I accidentally lost some footage so I'm piecemealing the two together to make sure you get a full picture. The idea here is yes you can recreate these if you want to but really it's about the method. So I'm just doing a base layer. I had started with a light pink metallic paint, but it was too light for me. So I went in over top of that with a lavender Colorflex glitter glue, and I'm going to use that to adhere the purple glitter to this tumbler. Now this isn't actually the tumbler that the tutorial was supposed to feature, so most of it will be uh, the other tumbler, and I'll show you that one in the next clip, the glitter that I used for that base. But it's just a full coverage, nothing fancy, so I don't even seal this before putting a couple of layers of epoxy over this. Now here's that other tumbler. Again, just a single layer. This is Brandy Royale from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And once the epoxy is dry, I clear out that rim to make sure there's no epoxy that's going to keep the acrylic shell from going down into it. And now I'm adding Loctite Extreme Glue. My preferred method is to put epoxy in that rim, but for the sake of filming and getting stuff done, I use the Loctite. This glue dries pretty quickly, so you don't have a lot of time to work with it. And it does not have self-leveling properties, but you can move on to the next step in 20 to 30 minutes. I grab a skewer from Dollar Tree, run it around inside there trying to spread the glue, and put more glue in and do the skewer again, just back and forth until I think I've got enough glue in there evenly to ensure a seal. Once I've got it the way I think it is good, I put my acrylic shell down in there all the way, make sure it clicks in. Then I lift it and turn it. This helps me spread that glue and just kind of ensure that it's everywhere I need it to be. And then I put the base, I screw that base back on to hold it nice and tight. And I let it sit for about 30, 40 minutes this time, but I've done it as soon as 20 minutes. Once the glue is dry, I usually pour a little bit of water in there just to test the seal to make sure it's good, dump it out, and then I move on to the next step. Now for this design, I've got a semi-transparent vinyl sheet from Peachy Olive Glitter. Now these, both of the tumblers that you're seeing in this video were done around Valentine's Day, but I never got around to putting the tutorial together. In either case, you can use any semi-transparent that's like this. There's lots of them out there with flowers and all kinds of really pretty stuff. So this method could be applied to any design that you really want. But the idea is semi-transparent means where part of it is clear and then the design itself, in this case the pink and black hearts, has a white backing so you can put it over any color. And since traditional storyboards are tapered, doing a wrap is basically impossible. So I am cutting out these hearts a few at a time. Now I like to trim them as close as possible. The closer it is, the less likely you are to uh, get a wrinkle along the edges. And really, if you wanted to, you could do individual hearts. I'm too lazy and I want to do that. Um, so even with groups of these, you can wind up with a few wrinkles, uh, usually around the edges. And that's okay, there's a way to fix that. So just go ahead and start cutting out those hearts. And I like to put it down towards the middle and then push it out to the sides. Pretty standard stuff for vinyl. But before I go any further, I kind of realized that I was getting bubble. So I'm carefully lifting the hearts back up get rid of that bubble. Actually, I think it was a crease, not a bubble. And then start laying it back down. And this is one way that you can fix that. 
just readjusting. But again, this is a tapered curved surface. So sometimes it's not gonna be perfect. In this case, I was gonna get a crease no matter what. So I went ahead and I cut a slit in the clear vinyl around that one pink heart. I laid down the vinyl again and the heart and that caused the clear to overlap. That took care of any issue with wrinkling, but it left me a bit of a bump. So in a second, you're gonna see me trim that part of the clear vinyl completely off. Now I begin to realize that I'm filling up all the space pretty quick and I decide that I want to put my decal on to make sure I've got room for it. Now this decal came from a sheet from Mr. Nella's Glitter. I think it was Valentine's one, which I couldn't find on the website so there won't be a link for that. Uh, so I guess it's not available anymore. Now I am using the Ultimate Guide tool from Cami Page Boutique. And I lined up the letter, and I should have given you a better camera angle, but the L in this decal was straight, so I lined up the edge of the vertical alignment tool to that L so I knew it would be nice and straight, and then I just smoothed down that decal. And that gave me the decal perfectly straight, as you can see. Now I'm going back in to finish filling up with the hearts. And again, I'm just cutting out groups of hearts, laying them down, and moving on to the next group until it's filled up the way I like it. And once again, we're back to the other tumbler. If you like these hearts, that is a sticky sheet from Mr. Nola's Glitter. And I'm taking my solution, which is distilled water and glycerin, about half and half for this one. I fill up my cup about three quarters of the way, and then I start adding my glitter. For this, I'm adding rainbows and unicorns, I think is the name of it, from Bougie Glitter, and a couple of pastel colored hearts that are basically nail glitter from Amazon. For the other one, I just used rainbows and unicorn again, just a little bit of it, and a gold chunky mix. But you get your glitter in, I don't like to waste any, so I try to use my popsicle stick to push the glitter down into the sides as best as I can. Twisting it helps me see how the glitter is going to flow and if I've added too little, too much, that kind of thing. And then I'm going to fill it up all the way up to that silver rim with the rest of my solution. Once you've got it up to that top rim, I grab a paper towel and I clear that silver part right there, basically getting it ready for the silicone. I like getting any extra glitter off of there and removing the moisture. When you're adding your silicone, you're going to try to do a bead of silicone, basically aiming for the edge of the silver, but making sure it touches the acrylic shell. Be careful though, don't push down too hard. If you do, you're going to push that silicone way down into the solution, and it's going to be very visible when you look at the cup when it's done. So you just run that bead around. Be careful not to get it on the threads in that center post. Grab your popsicle stick at about a 45 degree angle and smooth out the silicone, kind of like spreading butter. Make sure that it's touching the base all the way up to the acrylic rim in one continuous wall, basically. This way, you don't want any bubbles, any holes in that. You want basically a nice smooth dam there. And then remove any excess silicone from that top rim as well as the sides because when that dries, that can get in the way of the cap. And here I'm checking to make sure there's nothing, none of the dried silicone in the way. And I recommend you test 
the cap before you glue it. I didn't do that. This has burned me before. So even though I didn't do it, do as I say, not as I do, test it first because if there is anything in the way, you want to know before you add the glue because once that glue is added and dried, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it back on there. But in this case, everything was good and the bottom is now glued on. While that's drying, I am going to use my ultimate guide tool again, this time the pen adapter, and I'm going to use that to get a nice straight line for taping off. You can just put the pen in, tighten that little screw, add it to the post, tighten that screw when you're ready. Just line it up to where you want it. In this case, I'm looking for the lowest point of the silicone because no matter how hard I try, there's always some silicone showing and I'm looking for the lowest point. That's gonna be my starting point. This way, when I do my pin striping and everything, that's gonna be completely covered. And I do this at both the top and the bottom. This tool is seriously cool, y'all. It's got several different attachments for all kinds of uses, so I highly recommend it. Again, it's the ultimate guide tool from Cami Page Boutique, and I'll make sure it's linked in the description. You can see nice straight line drawn on. Now I'm using electrical tape. Uh, I know a lot of you like to use painter's tape and that's fine, use whatever you like. But with this being a tapered cup, I find that electrical tape does better. Now remember, there's no epoxy on the outside of this tumbler yet. So you want something that's not so sticky that it'll pull up your vinyl or anything else that you have on the outside of it and the Dollar Tree electrical tape isn't very sticky, uh, but it conforms nicely and it adheres enough that it gives me a nice crisp line. So I like this electrical tape. I have used other electrical tape and it was too sticky and it left a residue. I fold it under itself to give myself an easy pull tab and I do that at both the top and the bottom. If you're noticing those little metallic hearts, it's part of the footage that I lost, but I had this really cool tape dispenser. It's basically double-sided tape in shapes. In this case, it's hearts. I got it from Mr. Nola's Glitter. But I just put some of those around the cup and then I used some uh, leaf sheets that I had. I used gold and yellow gold and rose gold on those hearts and it gave that effect. I thought it was just a nice way to tie in all the colors that are in that base glitter. Now it's time to paint, give a base paint, and I use Miss Lillian's chalk paint in white. If I had pink at the time, I would have used pink, but I didn't, so I'm using white. But either way, it worked out perfectly. And I gotta tell you, this chalk paint is like the best spray paint alternative. I know a lot of us have been having problems with spray paint, and we've tried a lot of different types of alternatives, and this is by far one of my favorites. It goes on smooth, it has self-leveling properties, the coverage is excellent. I mean, I'm doing one coat, and I'm getting really good coverage here. It's a little thicker. If you go thinner, then you'll need two or three coats, and that's okay. But, you know, it just kind of depends on what you need it for. I knew I was putting a good glitter mix over top of this, so I wasn't too worried about it, and I did it a little bit thicker. But again, it has a self-leveling property, so it's pretty good, and it dries so fast, y'all. And if that's not fast enough for you, that's okay. <laughs> Grab out your heat gun. It'll be dry in minutes. And I'm just painting that taped off area in my white, getting it ready for the glitter application. Now, when you do the bottom of this cup, just pay attention there's a bit of a like a round bubble along the edge so make sure you get in the crease at the base of that lip um, i have a bad habit of missing a spot or two there so just pay attention to that spot if you're using one of these tumblers Oops, 
So yeah, even though it tried to run away, I'm gonna use Pinky Promise by Peachy Olive Glitter. Uh, I believe that was in the Valentine bundle. Absolutely gorgeous. And it matched those pink hearts really, really well. So now I'm using Glitter Glue by Color Flex. It's what I happen to have on hand and it dries pretty quick, lets you move on nice and fast. So I'm just painting that on. Now if you want to, you can leave tape there or add new tape to make sure you don't go over because you certainly don't want glitter to go down into the parts that you didn't intend it to. Um, me, I just decided to use a straight edge brush and be careful. And you'll see I kind of miss a few spots right there at the, the base of that white, but it's not a big deal. I just grabbed my paintbrush dabbed a little more glitter glue on it and added more uh, glitter. It worked perfectly. I'm going to do this again at the bottom as well as the top. Then I'm gonna spray seal it with clear matte and do a couple of coats of epoxy till it's all nice and smooth. Now it's time to do our pinstriping. And I found this gorgeous rose gold foil with little like engraved hearts in it. I think it's Starcraft foil adhesive vinyl, but I definitely got it at 143vinyl.com. And I thought it was just the perfect little add to this and the rose gold match the rose gold heart, so win-win. And I just line that up nice and straight and apply it to the top. And I do the same at the bottom. For whatever reason, the bottom decided to fight with me. I think part of it was user error, but the rest of it was, um, no matter what you do, that bottom part of a storyboard always has a bit of a divot where the bottom cap meets the acrylic. And I think that was kind of messing with me and making this a little harder to do. But in the end, I win, and that's all that matters, right? The struggle is real, y'all. See, I know I'm not the only one who has this problem every once in a while. Just one particular beast decides to fight you every step of the way. I had noticed that it wasn't lining up exactly where I needed it to. So one more adjustment and this time I get it. And now I'm using, this is either nail tape from Amazon or finishing tape from Mr. Nola's Glitter. Either way, it's a nice soft gold that matched the gold in the glitter and the little hearts that I had added. And I'm just gonna outline that vinyl at the top and the bottom on both sides. See? Much easier this time. If you notice, even with a little bit of struggle that I had with the foil, pinstriping is a lot easier. Honestly, so are wraps. And that's because of the cup cradle that I have. I mean, no joke. I know. Shameless plug. Yes. Absolutely. But the cup cradle was the very first tool I bought from Cami Page Boutique, and it was absolutely just a game changer. I used to chase my cup all over the table when doing something like this or having to hold it kind of weird, and it just, it wasn't comfortable. And so I didn't really like doing pinstriping, but the cup cradle lets you just roll your cup as you're doing it, and it all stays in one place. Because it's a little smaller, but deeper than other cup cradles that I've seen, it doesn't take up quite as much space, which makes it a win for me. Just go ahead and add your gold 
on both sides of your vinyl at the top and the bottom. My edge got a little skewed, so I just lifted it and moved it. Really easy to do. There you go. As I'm pinstriping with this, it stretches a little bit, so I pull it kind of taut, and then I run my finger along it as I move forward so that I'm pushing it down and keep it right where I want it to be instead of accidentally lifting it. And whenever I use any kind of metallic pinstriping, whether it's vinyl, nail tape, whatever, I like to seal mine with UV resin. I've used the polycrylic, the Minwax water-based polycrylic, and I've still had some lifting sometimes, so I didn't want to do that again. Uh, I started using UV resin for these and it works like a charm. Sorry, I'm out of frame, but I fix it here in a second. Usually takes a couple of goes at 90 seconds turning it for both sides before I'm ready to move on to the next step. And that's it couple of coats of epoxy till smooth and your cup is done. So you see it looks more complicated than it actually is. Using semi-transparent vinyl just gives you a great look and it's really easy to do. That's it for this tutorial guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit. If you do have any questions feel free to reach out to me. It's probably best if you join my Facebook group. That would be the easiest way to get in touch with me. Plus there just might be a few discount codes for you for some of the stuff that I use. But either way I'd love for you to be a part of the community and hang out. We're growing a little bit at a time and we have a lot of fun in there. So I hope you have a wonderful day and again thank you for watching.